Today's video is brought to you by Lord of Maps, creators of some of the most fantastic maps you'll find anywhere. Be sure to stick around after the video for an exclusive discount code for my viewers, redeemable at lordofmaps.com. They are among Morgoth's most dreadful and dangerous servants. Maiar, who joined the Dark Lord in his rebellion, becoming demons of shadow and flame. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the Balrogs of Morgoth. The Balrogs were originally Maiar, the same type of being as Sauron, Gandalf, and Aonwe. These Maiar were likely those who joined Melkor in his discord during the music of the Ainur, at the very creation of the world. After Melkor makes his way to Arda, he creates his first fortress of Utumno. In Utumno, he gathered his demons about him, those spirits who first adhered to him in the days of his splendor and became most like him in his corruption. Their hearts were of fire, but they were cloaked in darkness and terror went before them and they had whips of flame. Over the years, Melkor brings many to his service. While some may have been with him since the beginning, others he corrupted afterwards with lies and treacherous gifts. In the Silmarillion, we are told of all Melkor's servants, the Balrogs were most to be feared. Dreadful among these spirits were the Valarakar, the scourges of fire that in Middle-earth were called the Balrogs, demons of terror. After Melkor destroys the two lamps, he gathers his servants about him in his first fortress of Utumno in the northern part of the world. Eventually, with the awakening of the elves, the Valar would seek to protect them from the Dark Lord and move against him. Melkor would be defeated in this Battle of the Powers, in which his fortress of Utumno is destroyed. At their master's defeat, the Balrogs flee west to Melkor's secondary fortress of Angband. There, along with Sauron, they would await many long years until their master's return. Ages later, Melkor escapes Valinor with the Silmarils alongside Ungoliant. Meanwhile, the Balrogs are still waiting in Angband. After Melkor and Ungoliant arrive in Beleriand, Ungoliant demands the jewels they had stolen so that she may consume them. After handing over the lesser jewels voluntarily, Melkor attempts to withhold the Silmarils. Ungoliant, now grown to an even more massive size, threatens to destroy a weakened Melkor. Hearing Melkor's cry from Angband, the Balrogs run across the lands of Beleriand like a tempest of fire. Using their whips, they drive off the great spider-like creature, saving their master. While Ungoliant would learn of these great fire demons and make her way to Nendungorthib, the elves would not learn of these foes until the Dagor Nuin Giliath. As we covered in our video on Feanor, the King of the Noldor leads his people to victory in this battle over Morgoth's orcs. Feanor, in his eagerness to defeat Morgoth himself, pushes on to enemy lands, where he is ambushed by an entire group of Balrogs. Here, we meet Gothmog, the Lord of the Balrogs. Gothmog mortally wounds Feanor, who dies of his wounds after being rescued by his sons. Gothmog and his Balrogs would play major frontline roles in Morgoth's wars against the elves and men of Middle-earth. In the Dagger Bragalach, a force of Balrogs are unleashed alongside Glaurung, the very first dragon. They break a 400-year siege of Angband, and the area of Ardgallon is consumed in rivers of flame, becoming the desert plain of Anfauglith. In a later counterattack by the Great Alliance organized by Feanor's son Maitros, the Balrogs fight alongside the orcs and dragons in an eventual overwhelming victory for Morgoth, known as the Nirnaeth Arnoediad. In this battle, Gothmog kills Fingon, the second High King of the Noldor to die at his hands. In the closing moments of the battle, it is Gothmog who captures Hurin alive at the order of his master. He binds this lord of men and drags him back to Angband, where he would be interrogated by Morgoth. 
It would not be until the fall of Gondolin that we would see an elf best a Balrog in battle. In fact, this victory for Morgoth would cost him two of his greatest servants. Having learned the secret location of Gondolin, Morgoth sends forth an army of orcs, Balrogs, and dragons. As a group of surviving elves are taking a hidden pass through the mountains, they are waylaid by a Balrog. In this moment, Glorfindel, the very same that we meet in the Fellowship of the Ring, stays behind to battle the demon alone so that his kin may flee to safety. Glorfindel and the Balrog fight upon the pinnacle of a rock and both fall into the abyss below to their deaths. Meanwhile, within the city, in the very square of the king, the elf lord Ecthelion comes face to face with Gothmog. In their battle, Ecthelion drives the spike of his helm into the belly of the Balrog and pulls the creature with him into the deep fountain of Gondolin. The Balrog's fire is extinguished and both Gothmog and Ecthelion drown in the waters of the fountain. With two of Morgoth's Balrogs having been lost, we are left to wonder, just how many Balrogs were there? In Tolkien's earliest writings, he envisioned there being as many as hundreds or even a thousand Balrogs. However, in his later writings, as it becomes clear that these were creatures of immense power, he says they were actually few in number. Otherwise, Morgoth would have quite easily dominated Middle-earth. There should not be supposed more than say three, or at most seven, ever existed. Now if there were indeed only three Balrogs, this means that after the fall of Gondolin, Morgoth would have been left with only a single Balrog, the very same that the Fellowship would meet in Moria. However, with the possibility of there being seven total Balrogs, this would mean that there would be as many as five at the time of the War of Wrath to end the First Age. We are told that the Balrogs are among Morgoth's massive army, an army great beyond count, that battles in the War of Wrath. However, it availed him not. The Balrogs were destroyed, save some few that fled and hid themselves in the caverns inaccessible at the roots of the earth. We know for certain of the Balrog in Moria, but this passage from the Silmarillion leads us to believe that while some were destroyed in the War of Wrath, there may very well have been other Balrogs left hidden in the roots of the earth. As for the great Balrog of the Third Age, he would hide himself deep in the roots of the Misty Mountains, beneath the dwarven realm of Khazad Dum. There he would rest for over 5,000 years, missing the entirety of the Second Age, and most of the Third. In 1980 of the Third Age, the dwarves of Khazad Dum are led by Durin the Sixth. In their attempts to further mine more Mithril, the great treasure of their realm, they wake the Balrog, a creature that at this time would be nothing more than an ancient legend to the dwarves. The Balrog kills King Durin the Sixth, earning its name Durin's Bane. While the dwarves would attempt to fight off the great demon, its power is far too great, and they are driven from their home in 1981, after Durin's heir, King Nain I, is also killed by the Balrog. The elves of Lorien were made aware of these events and began calling Casa Doom Moria, meaning the Black Pit. These sylvan elves simply referred to the creature as the Nameless Terror, as they did not realize what it truly was at the time. For the next 500 years, Moria would belong to the Balrog. In 2480, Sauron begins to lay the foundation for his eventual new war in Middle-earth. He sends orcs and trolls to the Misty Mountains in order to make strongholds, which would prevent people from passing into Eriador. The Balrog allows these other dark beings to populate Moria. Now there's some debate and speculation on whether the Balrog would ultimately submit to Sauron. On one hand, Sauron was Morgoth's chief lieutenant. However, Sauron and the Balrog are both Maiar, so there's an argument that they would be seen more as equals. Either way, the Balrog's actions regarding the orcs and trolls lead one to believe that he would at least have been open to coordinating with the new Dark Lord. The Balrog would largely remain unseen for hundreds of years. 
One of the few to see the creature before the Fellowship was Dane Ironfoot. In the Battle of Azanabalzar in 2799, Dane kills Azog and helps the dwarves defeat the orcs. Arriving at the gate, he catches a glimpse of the Balrog and feels the terror of the demon, and the dwarves would go no further. They choose instead to return to their former homes and find new ones in the Blue Mountains. Finally, in 3019, Durin's Bane would meet its match. That January, the Fellowship of the Ring travels through Moria on their quest to Mount Doom. After discovering the Tomb of Balin in the Chamber of Mazarbul, Gandalf first comes into contact with a mysterious creature that is neither orc nor troll. Off you go, all of you, down the stairs. Wait a few minutes for me at the bottom, but if I do not come soon, go on. We cannot leave you to hold the door alone, said Aragorn. Do as I say, said Gandalf fiercely. Swords are no more use here, go. Suddenly, at the top of the stair, there was a stab of white light. Then there was a dull rumble and a heavy thud. The drum beats broke out wildly. Doom boom, doom boom, and then stopped. Gandalf came flying down the steps and fell to the ground in the midst of the company. Well, well, that's over, said the wizard, struggling to his feet. I have done all that I could, but I have met my match and have nearly been destroyed. But don't stand there, go on. You will have to do without light for a while. I am rather shaken. After some time, the company finally comes to a rest, and Gandalf tells of the interaction with this mysterious and dreadful foe. Gimli took his arm and helped him down to a seat on the step. What happened away up there at the door? He asked. Did you meet the beater of the drums? I do not know answered Gandalf, but I found myself suddenly faced with something that I have not met before. I could think of nothing to do but to try and put a shutting spell on the door. I know many, but to do the things of that kind rightly requires time, and even then the door may be broken by strength. As I stood there I could hear orc voices on the other side. At any moment I thought they would burst it open. I could not hear what was said. They seem to be talking in their own hideous language. All I caught was rash, that is fire. Then something came into the chamber. I felt it through the door, and the orcs themselves were afraid and silent. It laid hold of the iron ring, and then it perceived me and my spell. What it was I cannot guess, but I have never felt such a challenge. The counterspell was terrible. It nearly broke me. For an instant, the door left my control and began to open. I had to speak a word of command. That proved too great a strain. The door burst into pieces. Something dark as a cloud was blocking out all the light inside, and I was thrown backwards down the stairs. All the wall gave way, and the roof of the chamber as well, I think. The Fellowship makes their way to the Bridge of Khazad-dûm, where they finally realize the dreadful foe they are facing, and see the Balrog with their own eyes. Though Balrogs are often depicted as being incredibly large and looking like traditional demons, the passage in the Fellowship of the Ring points to them looking a bit more human than you might expect. It was like a great shadow, in the middle of which was a dark form, of man shape maybe, yet greater, and a power and terror seem to be in it and go before it. While there are countless incredible illustrations of Balrogs from over the years, Tolkien's description indicates they were possibly more man-like in appearance, though certainly larger, cloaked with shadow and flame. Also worth noting is Gandalf's earlier interaction when attempting to seal the door. Gandalf says the counterspell was terrible, the Balrogs were not creatures of simple brute strength, but also incredible magical power. Given the description in the book, this particular illustration is one of my absolute favorites of a Balrog, because it embraces the demonic, yet also human-shaped description found in the book. 
As for the other common question regarding Balrogs, I've made an entire video covering the debate on Balrogs and wings. Now, back to the story at hand. As the Balrog reveals itself at the bridge of Khazad-dûm, Legolas, despite never seeing one himself, instantly recognizes what this creature is and cries out that a Balrog has come. Gimli, the mighty dwarven warrior, drops his ax in despair, covering his face. Despite being already weary, Gandalf stands upon the bridge, blocking the Balrog from exiting the mountain. Gandalf and the Balrog fall through the depths of Khazad-dûm, to the uttermost foundations of stone. For eight days, Gandalf pursues Durin's bane from this lowest dungeon to the highest peak, Zaraxagil, the pinnacle of the Silver Team. There, the wizard and the Balrog fight for three days and two nights. In the end, the Balrog is cast down, and his body breaks the mountainside as it falls to its ruin. Gandalf the Grey gives his own life in order to destroy this Balrog of Morgoth one of the greatest and most terrible of Morgoth's servants. Such a creature would have wreaked havoc, the likes of which never seen since the First Age. As we look at the map of Middle-earth, we can only guess where the other surviving Balrogs may have buried themselves. But I also love gazing at a great map of our own world, which is why I'm a big fan of Lord of Maps. The style is beautiful, it's a great conversation piece, and even the packaging itself is a piece of art. As my viewers, you can use the exclusive discount code NERDOFMAPS to save 15% off your order. Visit lordofmaps.com to check out their great selection of maps from all around the world. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Jim Limber Davis, Jay Brakefield, Timothy Park, Sky Carcass, Zetrock, Grand Strategy Nerd, The Dark Haired One, Salim Rahman, Slide Belts, Wyland, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artist in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.